Hello, Hungary. Hello, Budapest. Hello, fellow Europeans and American friends. Thank you so much for having me. Allow me to skip formalities for a moment and dive right into a subject that is not so cheerful, but very, very necessary to discuss. Let me walk you through the past seven days in Europe. This week in Stockholm, three elderly women in their 70s were stabbed in broad daylight on the streets. In London, four people were stabbed in a time span of just 42 hours. In Paris, hundreds of Afghan migrants took to the street to riot. And in Brigolo, also in France, yet another church was burned down to the ground. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is just a few incidents in just a couple of days on our beautiful continent. But we all know that these incidents aren't incidents anymore. If there's one thing that's for sure, it's that we know, and our governments also know, that there is a link between mass migration and crime. In the Dutch city of Dordrecht, something interesting happened the other day. They announced, and this is a small city in the Netherlands, in my home country, that a new asylum center will be put in that little town. And what did the municipality do? They said, we are going to offer citizens who live in the vicinity of this center a thousand euros to take extra safety measures. Our new reality in Europe consists of frequent rapes, stabbings, killings, murders, shootings, even beheadings. But let me be clear about one thing. This did not used to happen before. This is a newly imported problem. Samuel P. Huntington predicted this over 25 years ago when he wrote, and I quote, in the new world of mass migration, the most pervasive, important and dangerous conflicts will not be between the social classes. They will not be between the rich and the poor. They will be between peoples belonging to different cultural entities. Tribal wars and ethnic conflicts will occur within civilizations. Well, boy, was he right. And the worst part is, we as a society seem to have become indifferent to it. When another white boy or a white girl is at the hand of an immigrant, we might shake our head, we might let out a sigh, we might even get angry for a minute or two, and then we go on with our lives. We offer the family thoughts and prayers, but nothing ever changes. Ladies and gentlemen, what does that say about us? This is the sign, this is a response of a society that has already given up. A society that has already accepted its defeat. But is this true? Have we given up? Do we really accept the new reality that our globalist leaders have in mind for us? I know one thing for sure. And that is that if nothing changes, if we don't start to seriously fight for our continent, for our religion, for our people, our countries, then this time that we live in will go down in history as the time in which Western nations no longer had to get invaded by hostile armies in order to be conquered. This time will then go down in history as the period in which the invader was actively invited in by a corrupt elite. And not only did this corrupt elite invite the enemy in, they made the native population pay for it too. Everyone who has eyes can see it. The native, white, Christian, European population is being replaced at an ever-accelerating rate. Let me back this up for you with some statistics from my home country. Let's take Amsterdam, the capital. Amsterdam currently consists of 56% migrants. The Hague, 58% migrants. Rotterdam, 
almost 60 percent migrants. And of course, most of these immigrants come from non-Christian, non-Western, African and Middle Eastern countries. Conclusion, the Dutch population is already outnumbered in the majority of our cities. But let's look, let's look onwards. London, 54% migrants. Again, conclusion, native population outnumbered. Brussels, color me shocked, 70% migrants. Conclusion, native population majorly outnumbered. And other Europeans will, of course, follow suit soon if they haven't already. So I'm going to draw the forbidden conclusion here. The great replacement theory is no longer a theory. It's reality. And what's interesting about replacement is that the establishment will either deny its existence or when they admit to it, they say that it's a good thing that the native European population is soon no longer a majority on its own continent. Dutch national and dubbed climate pope Frans Timmermans already stated in 2015 that diversity is humanity's destiny and that Europe will be diverse. And of course, by now, I think we all know what they mean with the word diversity. It means less white people, less of you. Imagine this in an Asian or an African country. Imagine their leaders rejoicing in the fact that their people will soon no longer be a majority in their own country. Absolutely unthinkable, unimaginable. So what in the world is wrong with our leaders? The underlying sentiment of what they say is always the same. Our establishment claims that white people are evil and that our history is somehow fundamentally different from that of others. Consciously or unconsciously, they have sucked up the lies and the anti-white dogmas of the neo-Marxist critical race theory. That's why the totalitarians in Brussels are trying to force you, the Hungarian people, a sovereign nation to accept immigrants despite the fact that the population has said no and so has the government. But make no mistake, the majority of the Dutch people haven't asked for this either. Just like Brussels is forcing Hungary to accept these words of immigrants, they are doing the same now even in the smallest of towns in the Netherlands. No part may remain Dutch in the traditional sense of the word. No part of Europe may remain, may remain European. And it's not difficult to understand why. If the old Europe still exists in certain places, then people will be able to compare the new Europe to the old, and newsflash, they will prefer the old. That's why the Eurocrats hate Hungary so much. And their message is clear. Our way of life, our Christian religion, our nations, they have to go, without exception. Their vision of the future is the neoliberal, unrecognizable Europe, where every city becomes kind of like Brussels. Ugly, dirty, unsafe, zero social cohesion, where the buildings are constantly under construction and they never ever seem to finish, and even when they do, the end result is uglier somehow than what they started with. And what are we left with? a permanent state of isolation, confusion, and disorientation. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the New World Order. So what's the antidote? A strong Christian Europe of sovereign nation states. That's why we need to outright reject the lie that nationalism causes war. It's not nationalism or national sovereignty that causes war. It's expansionism. And where in Europe do we find that nowadays? In one place and one place only. Brussels. <laughs> it
Isn't it funny how the same people who erode our national sovereignty and love to do it, give it all up to the Eurocrats there, that those people are now telling us that we need to spend billions and billions of euros on the national sovereignty of Ukraine? It's a joke, honestly, and it's a pretty sick, expensive and dangerous joke. During a recent interview, I got asked by an interviewer, do you think that you ever go too far? Do you think that you're ever too radical? I thought about it for a second, and I said, no. No, I don't think I go too far. <laughs> Truth be told, ladies and gentlemen, I think we in Europe do not go far enough. I think that if we really think about the organized, structural attack on our civilization, that we don't do enough. Do we do enough to stop the attack on our families, on our continent, on our countries, on our religion? When we hear about another murder, another stabbing of a young, innocent child, do we do enough? When we know that our national sovereignty has been given up in less than a century, to Brussels, do we do enough? When we hear that Christian kids in Germany are now converting to Islam to fit in, do we do enough? I don't think so. The totalitarian institute of the European Union needs to calm down. Let me be clear, I don't believe in reforms. When the foundation of your institution is rotten, and that is the case in Brussels, you can rebuild the house on top of it all you want, but it's still going to crumble. So the only answer is the Tower of Babel needs to be destroyed. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are the daughters and sons of the greatest nations on earth. And we need to ask ourselves, what has happened to us? Where do we come from? And more importantly, where are we going? Our elites have declared a war on us. And now it is time for us to put on the full armor of God, fight back and win. Thank you so much.